Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. And I'm the captain. And again, we have the wondrous pleasure of being at Anderton's.co.uk in the special video house. My favourite place in the whole world. It's Taylor. It's Taylor. It's Taylor. And again, we're sort of revisiting a, a, a guitar that's been in the range for a while now for no other reason than it's one of life's eternal questions of should I buy a mahogany topped guitar or a and spruce topped guitar? the answer is yes. Goodbye. Um, <laughs> I don't know, it's probably not one of life's eternal questions, but you may well have been asking yourself recently, you know, what happens when guitar makers make guitars out of different woods? So we thought a good opportunity to look at a couple of the models from Taylor, uh, probably either their best or second best selling range of, of American guitars. So this is the, the 300 series from Taylor is the first where it's all American, all solid woods, all with a beautiful hard case that you can see behind me. Um, and again, where really all they're scrimping on uh, is the simplicity of the finish. So, you know, relatively, uh, it's not a flash guitar, you know, where, where perhaps some of the, the models higher up the range. Oh, I think that looks absolutely beautiful. So yeah, so for many, many years, uh, the 300 series guitar was like the one that Rob has. Now, just to explain, I love the way Taylor do their modeling. It's really, really simple for anybody to work out. The first digit of the model, 300, denotes the series, so this is three series. The second digit denotes the timber that's used on the top of the guitar, and the third digit denotes the shape of that's the guitar. That's a clever idea. Really, really simple to do. Uh, so what have I got here? I have a three, two, four. So three for the series, two because it's mahogany, and four because it's the, the Grand Auditorium shape. Uh, what's yours? It'll tell you in the sound hole. I think it looks like a 314. Be careful four. not to knock that. 314CE. Uh, yeah, 314CE. So basically, exactly the same guitar, but with a cutaway. Cutaway extreme. And, of course, with the spruce top. Yes. Um, now, the guitars are both Sapili uh, back and sides, solid Sapili back and sides. Rob's is a Sitka spruce top. Mine is a mahogany Ebony top. fingerboard, ebony bridge. Yeah. Um, and Little again, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've just got regular Taylor own brand tuners. They look a bit like the, um, uh, I want to say Shala, I think, as they look like, or Goto. That's the ones I was thinking of. Um, it's got Taylor's ES2 system built in, which is the, the sort of the Piazzo system, but where um, the, the treble, middle, and bass strings of the guitar, perhaps that's a bit misleading saying treble, middle, and bass, but the top two, the middle two, and the bottom two have their own kind of fine-tuned volume thing, so you can you can tweak your ES2 system. Is that a sticker on your scratch plate? I can't yes. quite see from it. It says equipped with Elixir, HD light phosphor bronze strings. Kind of disappointing because I thought what they'd done is they'd inlaid some mahogany into the scratch plate in a really beautiful, interesting way. No, sadly not. Sadly no. not. Just telling you what strings are on it. Uh, which is another cool thing about Taylor. All their guitars are Elixir um, strings. So jolly expensive strings. The last few um, years though, Gus G was telling me that he uh, played a whole tour on one set of strings. And didn't change them ever. He didn't need to. Yeah. The yeah. other guy freaked me out when I met uh, Eric Johnson. Clang name drop. Um, <laughs> For a guy that is so, so kind of like, you know, oh, it's got to, the fuse has got to be right and the plug's got to be right and all the other stories you've heard, he's kind of like, yeah, I never restring my guitars. It's like, you know, it's, it's literally, he just literally waits until they rust away to nothing. We were listening, think. Beer and I in our hotel room last night, we were listening to Eric Johnson. Oh, really? On, on YouTube, yeah. And it never ceases to amaze me, we're going slightly off tangent here. He's so clean. Just how many modern players oh, are, influenced are influenced by him. Influenced by him. Now the, the, the four shape, the Grand Auditorium shape, is without doubt the most popular shape in the Taylor range, right across all the models, but it's not for everybody. Um, there are other shapes in the range that are a little bit smaller, like the, uh, the two. Oh, like this little one. Yeah, it's a it's beautiful cute. shape. There are shapes in the range that are more traditional, like the, the zero, which is the dreadnought. And there are shapes in the range like the, the six and the eight, which are bigger, more like, you know, perhaps the, the sort of super jumbo 
stuff. So you, and that's really, uh, that's to do with the, the, the sort of the, the feel that you want to get and the tone that you want to get. So um, bigger the guitar, bigger the, you know, heavier, bigger the sort of the bass end and the, uh, and the more you've really got to bang the guitar to kind of get some tone out of it, get some volume out of it. And the smaller the guitar, the, the more compact and comfortable it feels to play. And the less hard you have to hit the strings to get the top to move. So it'll just be a little bit kind of more of a delicate kind of sound. <laughs> What we really wanted to do was was sort of show and appreciating that Rob and I are different players and so we'll naturally sound a little bit different anyway, but the idea of what sort of sound you would get from a spruce top guitar versus a, a mahogany top guitar. Yes. So let's hear some tones on Rob's guitar. only companies or possibly even the only company I know who uh, completely redesigned the neck joint on their guitars so whereas most brands use a sort of a dovetail style neck joint you know where, where the the, um, the neck block and the, and the block of wood here are kind of carved to, to sort of fit and it would be glued in uh -huh. and then kind of once it's in it's sort of it's in and it's quite difficult to adjust uh, Taylor guitars believe it or not are a bolt-on neck you know that? But you know what? Sometimes a bolt on neck gives you amazing, great, well, incredible tone. You know? I don't know that. Yeah, I mean, essentially, there's just as much. You know, the, the timbers are flush right up to each other, but because it's bolt on, it means that they can, when they're fixing the guitars in, they've got loads and loads of different, minutely different thickness spacers. So as they're assembling it, they put the right spacer in yeah, so that you yeah. can absolutely <laughs> nail the action on every single guitar. Uh, can persi yeah. persistently, oh, it's incredible what how much difference to. The, the angle of a neck that like mm. a half a mil oh. piece slither of whatever would yeah, make less you than never half think. a mil, yeah. thousandth of a mil. Exactly, you know. never think, but it's crazy. You know? um, so, and I noticed, you know, when Rob was playing there, you can really hear the kind of, you know, if I, you do the sort of the light and the shade, so that's soft to, to big, you know, you get Well, yeah, when I was moving the pick around too, but also it's really easy to play. Yeah. You can play all over the neck and it's nice, but yeah, like, um, I knew, he knew, he gave me the look. He's like, I'm going to start singing. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're not going our, there. That's probably GT, our biggest hit. Is our biggest hit? GT. Oh, GT. Yeah. Uh, or GTA even. But we forgive Avril Lavigne. Right? Yes. Um, so if I play my guitar. Man, that just sounds beautiful. Yeah. What you should be hearing um, is a little bit less at the top end, because it shouldn't be as bright as the Sitka Spruce top, but a bit more oomph in the, in the mid-range, um, and just a, a, a subtly different kind of tone guitar. I don't know, and I'm, I'm about to sneeze. No? <laughs> oh, please sneeze. <laughs> I kept it in. It breathe, might, breathe in, it breathe might in. Come, it might come back. Oh. Um, what you might hear, again, a lot of what you're hearing is just that I'm a different guitar player to Rob, but I'll try and do that, the similar sort of thing where I'm moving the pick around where I'm, I'm picking and do soft and hard. We and use the like same that. pick, so by the way. We do use the so same like pick. So my pick sounds like... Yeah, and mine sounds like this. 
So there are actually sets. It's almost <laughs> in, almost an indiscernible difference there. You know. Anyway. Unfortunately, I can't play D, C, and G without becoming. Uh, when was the last Richard time you, you saw Young Guns? Ah, <laughs> uh, not for a while. But that's a different song, isn't it? So Young Guns isn't isn't wanted. Young Guns is is the is the Young Guns. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it has a similar kind of similar kind of feel. See to the it. size of them chickens. <laughs> Such a great film. What's he What's he say at the beginning? Oh, well, hang on a second. There's the, there's the, what's the Billy the Kid line? It's like I make it famous. Or oh, he goes, I don't shoot you. I make it famous. Anyway, without sounding like a, some sort of um, like cartoon form. character. Yes. It's all done with a plectrum just because I'm rubbish with my fingers, but with fingers. So, look, these are the first couple of guitars, so let's um, put these down for a minute because this is the, 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 the four size, the Grand Auditorium size. Let's go over to uh, the, the smaller one in the range. So we've gone over to the, to the smaller guitar and we've also sort of reverse swapped who's got the mahogany top guitar and who's got the um, spruce top guitar. I much prefer the sound of the Just mahogany. Get, get all your dials up halfway, otherwise Rebeer will... Did I say Rebeer? I can so hear that guitar sounding darker than the one that you had before. Oh. You love small acoustic guitars though, don't you? Absolutely. this thumping low end that's quite focused it's, well it's not like a fat fuzzy bath that fills the room it's a, it's a focused percussive yeah. um sound that I just for some reason is really pleasant kind of just great sound, yeah. this is great yeah very very nice acoustic guitar yeah, yeah. so is that what well, that's a three one let me read sorry, the code three, inside a three two two three two two c Oh, no, e. E. So you'll notice the E means it's got the pickup in, which they pretty much all do, and the, the C E would mean it has a cutaway and a pickup in it. So um, keep playing that one because I'm I'm loving okay. listening to what you're you're doing. The spaceship landing in the back garden now. So same kind of thing here. Am I down tuned from you? Give me an E. Got it easy, mate. E flat tuning for the people. <clears throat> it's just like I thought you had. No, but then it, it it would. If I we might as well leave this in because if I'd have left this an E flat, uh, a it lot of you would have, have gone, oh, it's a bit bassier this guitar, and that would have been a misleading. So let me just uh, give me, I'll give you. This sounds 
sounds to me more like a conventional acoustic guitar. Yeah. It's got those kind of toppy overtones, if you like, that I'm more it's used to hearing. Uh, whereas that sounds like a sort of a darker version of an acoustic guitar. <laughs> Pokey too, like it's, it's belting volume in my yeah, direction. Yeah, it, it's um, it's funny, isn't it? There's, there's, there's sort of the dreadnought shaped guitar is is one of those kind of. It's such a sort of standard looking guitar now. I think that there's a, there's a worry that if you go smaller, somehow you get a, a, a less or not less is the wrong word, but like not as good. And I just kind of think it's it's every acoustic guitar shape has a certain voice and a certain clarity to it. It's probably like being in a choir, isn't it? You yeah, can't yeah, say yeah. that a, a tenor <clears throat> is better than a, um, you know, this is showing my lack of theory here. Soprano but, you know, or so, an yeah, alto. Or... It's, not, it's not that one's better than another. They yeah. just all fit within the different sort of spectrum yeah. differently, don't they? So... The size of these guitars. Got to admit, this is this is way kind of. I mean, I've got a big dreadnought acoustic guitar, and I do yeah. sometimes feel whenever I'm playing it that it is a bit like, whoa, this is a mahoosive guitar. Um, well, anyway, what should we play? Chapman. There you go, and if you're interested in these fine and dandy guitars, I shall put a link in the description below to where you can find out about Taylor. Um, and uh, yeah, I've enjoyed it. I've, I've been the captain. Too. I've been Chappers. Take it easy. Bye! My throat improved that. Yeah, time. well, let me see. Slightly a improved. Watch this. That's the <laughs> shot. <laughs> what a brilliant guitar.